Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in this series that I'm making on the South African Union coins, we are now moving in the realm of, of the big boys. So that would be the, uh, the florin or the two shilling you see over here, as well as that of the half crown or the 216, which means, you know, two shillings and six pennies, which makes our half crown. So let's, let's have a look at them. Let's start with the two shilling. Now for both the two shilling and the half crown, the obverse uses the same design as with all the other Union coins. So we have King George V from 1923 until 1936, a well-struck design, a, well, a, a very detailed design, um, as you can see over here. Then after that, of course, the King George VI from 1937 until 1952. There are two varieties of that coin, um, one with the Imperator and one without. And then lastly, Queen Elizabeth II from 1953 until 1960. And of course, that suffers a bit from a lack of detail on the dies, which was in fact fixed with the British coins, but not with the South African ones. Now let's have a look at the reverse on this 1958 two shilling. Now, as you can see, it consists of the wording South Africa to the left and South Africa to the right, as well as the denomination at the bottom that says two shilling. Um, at some point that also used to say florin uh, in the earlier versions. Uh, let me see if I can get an example of that. Yes, here we go. So on the, on the 1926, for example, you'll see florin at the bottom. Um, instead of, of two shilling. And then of course uh, the design itself is, is that of a, of a shield and it consists of four smaller pictures inside that shield that represents of course the four provinces at the time. So at the top left you see of course Lady of Hope which is also a similar design as on the one shilling. So that represents uh, the Cape, the Cape of Good Hope on the right hand side, the two wildebeests, black wildebeests of, the, of Natal province, which is a similar design as you'll find on both the two cent coin, the old second decimal two cent coin, as well as the five rand coin, the modern five, five rand coin. Then on the bottom right is the uh, Osavar, the ox wagon, which of course is representative of the Transvaal. And then on the bottom left is that of a orange tree. Which is a bit, which also has a very interesting history because it used to be a, it used to be a, 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 a wild olive, and then it was a camel thorn, and then there was controversial discussions and letters and things about that, and then eventually it was an orange tree, to represent the orange free state, which is neither orange nor free or a state for that matter. But here we are, and then of course that squiggly line in the middle that you see. Is of course representative of the Orange River, uh, which is a major river in South Africa. So that is the reverse design on our Union Queen Florin. Now the half crown has a very similar design as you can see. The only difference is that it has a crown at the top, which of course is representative of the British monarchy of which we were a union um, at the time. At the bottom you see two and a half shillings. Now 1951, I think that was changed to two and a half S. So the wording there was 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 decreased. So very, very similar to the two shilling, just the uh, crown that's at the top. Um, regardless of the you know of the history and everything behind that, I think it's a it's a actually a quite a beautifully designed coin. Uh, lots of symbolism, lots of motif on the on the actual reverse. Um, it's by far one of my favorites as well, is the two and a half or the, or the half crown. Okay, now these coins are becoming very scarce. Now, as I pointed out in a previous video, and also in the comments of the same video, silver coins were recalled by the South African government and also melted in record numbers during the 1980s. So you really struggle to get, to get, your, to get your silver coins in, in good condition. Um, now, the silver price today on the 29th of May to 2022 is roughly 17 US cents per gram. Now, until 1950, the half crown was 11.31 grams silver, and from 1952 onwards, it was 7.07 .07 grams. So, and even with the, and of course, with the current week rand, that gives you roughly 120 rand in silver bullion content. 
uh, of this coin. And remember, technically these coins are still legal tender, but they're only worth 25 cents. Um, so it's actually a no-brainer. Should you take 25 cents on face value, or should you just melt them down and get 120 rand for them? Um, so even any half crown um, prior to, to 1951, um, oh no, uh, yeah, prior to 1951, is of course at least worth 120 rand on the minimum, simply because of the silver bullion. Um, but, but of course, numis numismatically, these coins have increased quite a bit of value because they are, have become they have become quite scarce. So when we uh, talk about the quality of the coins, the Sheldon scale is often used. Now the Sheldon scale um, differentiates between circulated and uncirculated coins. Now circulated coins ranges from poor all the way to choice about uncirculated, which corresponds uh, to AU58 if it's a graded coin, and then also unc or uncirculated. And these of course go all the way from uh, barely being uncirculated, which is the ME60, ME61 and ME62 if it's a graded coin, all the way up to perfect uncirculated, which is ME6, ME70. Um, ME70 coin is almost unheard of. You, you almost have to take it directly out, of, out, of, out from the mint um, for it to actually have a chance to grade ME70 because the slightest imperfection or slightest mark or line or hairline or scratch even if it's how tiny, will actually um, take away from it being an ME70. So let's have a look at some of the coins and I'll give you some idea of what I think the coin is. It is unfortunately a very subjective scale. So um, people tend to differ on where a coin lies. I'm going to say what I think. I'll tell you what I think. And of course, let's just use that as a guide. Let's start. Okay, so the first coin is this uh, 1926 florin. It's a rare coin. So if you find this in mint state, that's it's a very valuable coin. I would say easily a few, quite a few thousand rands. In this condition, this is almost not a fine. If you if you can see on the camera as well, there's a lot of surface hairlines and scratches on this coin as well. So this is probably a problematic coin as well. If you look in the fields. You'll see, for example, that the age of South Africa is, is it's not all the lettering is clear. The age is a, a particular example of that. So this is, a, I would say, this is a, barely a fine. This is a choice very good, or just a very good at least. This 1932 florin is much better than the 1926. The 1932 is a, it's a bit more common. It's easier to find. Um, this coin, I would say, is very fine, uh, very fine plus, maybe even an extra fine. The rim is um, um, definitely not smooth. And if you look at the obverse, King George V, there's quite a bit of detail remaining. All the lettering is sharp, so I would say very fine plus to uh, maybe an extra fine. This 1954 uh, Queen Elizabeth Schillen, I would say, is... Uh, almost uncirculated or possibly a very low mint state um, but um, this is a very good coin in very good condition as I say this is um, a low mint state because there is some nicks and marks on the coin um, or it's um, a very high AU coin almost uncirculated. Now, so just to complete the whole discussion here is an example of a mint state coin this is a uh, ME64 1958 2 shilling and as you can see everything there's nowhere on any of the high points so uh, and this is also an ex Bakewell collection ME64 so and of course you can see the cartwheeling uh, full luster on the coin still lettering is clear absolutely nowhere so this is an example of an uncirculated coin now when it comes to coin collecting, there's always going to be school fees that you're going to need to pay. And so I'd like to share with you some school fees I had to pay. And the best example of that is, of course, this 1933 florin. Now, the 1933 florin is a rare coin, especially in mint state. 
when I bought this coin as a, as a raw coin, coin from a dealer, I thought uh, this is, uh, this is a, a, a almost uncirculated coin, AU, because if you look at the obverse, you can, uh, you can see somewhere on the high marks. So I sent it in for grading, and I was expecting something like an AU58 maybe, and I thought, this is going to be uh, a very, very nice coin to add to my collection, given that the 1933 is quite rare. But unfortunately, when this came, when this came back, it came back as AU details, which means that it's a, it's a problem coin. And the reason being, it's, it has excessive surface hairline. So probably what happened is somebody uh, tried to clean the coin with a piece of cloth and that introduced quite a few scratch marks, which means that the coin, the coin is a problem coin. And that, of course, totally destroys its value. So that happens from time to time. What can you do? Okay, so looking at the uh, half crowns, the first half crown is this 1925. I would say this is a fine, a fine uh, grading or a, um, a choice fine. So uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of wear in the high levels, but the lettering is still clearly visible. If you look at the obverse, all the high points, there is clear wear there. Um, but um, it's a good coin, I think, in terms of, of being a fine coin, uh, absolutely um, viable in a collection, especially since this is a 1925. You don't, you don't get these um, that often. This 1929 half crown, I would say, is a, is a choice, very fine. Maybe, maybe extremely fine, but I think that's a, that's a bit of a long shot. I think this is a choice, very fine. Um, there's still some coin luster that you see, so yeah, a little bit of that guard wheeling, but very, very, very little. Um, on the obverse, you can clearly see high points, there's even wear. The lettering is still very sharp. The rim is still, um, it's not smooth in any way, but um, there is quite some wear. So I would say maybe, maybe an extra fine, um, but most probably this will go through as a choice, very fine coin. Um, and of course the, the toning on this is actually quite nice it's, and that of course is what attracted me to the coin in the first place. Now this is not something you see very often. Um, this is a 1930 half crown, so a King George uh, the fifth and as you can see there's no way. There's cartwheeling um, on both sides of the coin, the reverse and the obverse and of course this is a MS 63 so this is an uncirculated coin, a 1930 half crown. You can clearly see the difference, for example, between this and that 1929. Um, the difference between being circulated and uncirculated, it's a stark difference. Now, just as with the shillings, there's a number of key dates in the 1940s when it comes to the half crowns. Now these are not from 1946 and 1945 as well. 1945, there was 183,000 of those coins minted. But 1946 up till 1950, there was very few minted. Um, 1946, for example, was 11,388. The 1948 that you see over here is 2,720 minted. And of those, 1,120 were, were proof strikes. So very, very few business strikes like these were minted. Uh, the 1949 and the 1950 also very, very rare. Um, of all these, I think the 1948 for some reason pops up more often. Um, this, uh, this particular one has some very, very nice toning. As you see, this is uh, King George VI. This is the MS62. Um, some very, very nice toning. But um, these are the key dates that you should have a look, look out for. So if you can find any of those dates, from 1945 all the way to 1950, um, even though it's, I mean, more recently than, for example, like 1930 or 30, 35 or something, um, these these uh, these are tend to be more uh, more pricey simply because of the low mintage figures. So this is the 1948. The last one I'd like to show you is this 1953 um, half crown, also a very nice coin. Um, in ice cartwheeling as well. This is a MS63, 1953. 
But uh, what makes this a bit more interesting than the others, of course, is, is this was graded by PCGS. So PCGS is also an American uh, grading company. Uh, very high quality grading. Um, but um, for some reason, fewer South African coins are graded by them. But um, still nothing wrong with their grading quality. Um, so, yeah, that's an example. Well, and that concludes the two shillings and the uh, two and a half shillings. So the florin and the half crown. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and you enjoyed looking at the coins as much as I do. To look back and do history like that. Um, if you like this video, you know the drill. Give it a thumbs up and give it a... Please subscribe. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think. If there's any topic you'd like me to cover um, or that you'd like me to do research on, I'd gladly do that and I'll do that in the next video. Uh, I would like to cover some, some Tsar coins at some point. Uh, the next video, of course, is going to be about the five shilling, the crown. Um, so we'll have a look at a few of those. But um, yes, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.